Philippians 2, 12-13 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Paul presents two opposite and yet completely harmonious sides of the Christian life. The first, emphasizing man's responsibility based on the truths just presented, and the second, emphasizing God's sovereign enablement, which allows man to fulfill his responsibility. Although God's part follows in Philippians 2.13, clearly man's part in verse 12 would be impossible without God's empowerment. Martin Lloyd-Jones says, quote, That is where the New Testament way of life differs from a merely ethical system. Any appeal to the world to live a Christian life before it has become a Christian is, as we have seen, a negation of Christian teaching. The Greek verb rendered work out means to continually work to bring something to fulfillment or completion. It cannot refer to salvation by works, but it does refer to the believer's responsibility for active pursuit of obedience in the process of sanctification or being set apart. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. 1 Corinthians 9, 24-27 Notice that word, disqualified. When we preach our faith and practice to others, we should do nothing that would cause us to become disqualified to do so. A contestant failed to meet basic training requirements could not participate at all, much less have an opportunity to win. Another verse related to working out our salvation, quote, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Or how about Galatians 6, 7 through 9? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So let's go further. Paul had just described Christ's obedience to the will of his Father. Based on Christ's example of selfless obedience, and even their past obedience when Paul was present with the Philippians, they were to allow these truths to motivate them to be diligent to obey Paul's command to work out their salvation, under grace, not law, even though Paul was not present. Paul especially draws our attention back to Philippians 2 verse 5, 6, and 7, and 8, the Lord's example of humility, submission, and obedience, selflessness, service, and sacrifice, to give us a pattern to follow. Jesus, after terrible suffering, was finally vindicated. So shall we be. He obeyed and endured to the end and was finally vindicated. Therefore, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This verse does not say work for your salvation or work 
toward your salvation or work at your salvation. It says work out your salvation. And no one can work out a salvation unless God has already worked it in. With fear and trembling, he says, there is no walking in the ways of the Lord until his fear will be established in your hearts. There can be no genuine morality apart from the fear of God. How can a man obey God while his affections are alienated from him? Paul is saying, first, have a proper heart and mind attitude, and then carry out the action of your working your salvation thoroughly and to completion. How we think about God will always influence how we act before him. While believers have been delivered from fear of the wrath of God, 1 John 4.18, we have not been delivered from the discipline of God. Sin in a believer can still bring discipline from God because of the sinful conduct. And in this sense, the believer still fears or should fear God. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Although the believer is responsible to work, the Lord actually produces the good works and spiritual fruit in the lives of believers. John 15 verse 5. This is accomplished because he works through us by his indwelling spirit. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. 1 Corinthians 3, 16-17 Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Galatians 3.3 3. The Weist Greek translation puts this verse like this. For God is the one who is constantly putting forth his energy in you, both in the form of your being desirous of and your doing his good pleasure. It is not a let go and let God affair. It is a take hold with God business. Let me say that again. It is not a let go and let God affair. It is a take hold with God business. It is a mutual cooperation with the Holy Spirit in an interest and activity in the things of God. The saint must not merely rest in the Holy Spirit for victory over sin and the production of a holy life. He must, in addition to this, dependence upon the Spirit, say a positive no to sin, and exert himself to the doing of the right. Adrian Rogers comments on this verse, quote, When you have a godly desire, that desire is from God, because no good thing can come out of our old, vile heart. And only God the Spirit in us can give us the supernatural power necessary to accomplish that godly desire. So we could paraphrase verse 13 in simple words by saying that God's Spirit is continually giving us the grace, the desire and power to do what pleases Him. In conclusion, we are to work out our salvation, the sanctification process, with fear and trembling, living every day in the fear of the Lord dying to self, disciplining our flesh so that we are not disqualified from the race. But we are not alone. His spirit within us energizes us for the very work he is calling us to do. For he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. God bless.